Hi, welcome once again. It's great to have you with me. We're going to be doing our last session tonight about the Kingdom of God. I kind of figure it must be like about 11 or 12 sessions that we've had now on the Kingdom of God. I kind of figure, well, we need to have a break from it. And so tonight is going to be our last session, but it's going to be a good session. I'm really, really pleased and uh, thankful that you've joined us tonight or whenever you're watching this later on at some stage. And so welcome tonight to Coastwide Church Victory Bible Studies. Let's pray and commit this time to God. Father, we thank you. We so honour you tonight. We ask you to just bring revelation into our hearts. Help us to understand further and further about the power of the Kingdom of God and how we can live in it. So we thank you for that, Lord. I pray that people will not hear my words, but they will hear your words in mine. We believe that and we receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So remember, Jesus himself said these words. He said that the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is the rule of God, the reign of God, the government of God. And he's saying that that kingdom is alive and well in you. And I believe that it's absolutely time for you and I to be thinking out of that kingdom, to have attitudes out of that kingdom, to have our words and our actions. Everything we're doing must be coming from a kingdom of God perspective. If it's not, then it's going to be coming from the kingdom of this world. And the kingdom of this world is really quite crazy at the moment. It's very, very mixed up out there in the world. And so we need to be rock solid because here's the deal, is that the things of God never change. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And so the kingdom of God and the way that it operates and the way that it manifests will never, ever change. That's why we can have faith in it. See, in you and I, because the kingdom is in us, in you and I is a production center, is that we are able, are able from our innermost being, from the kingdom of God within us, produce good things happening in and through our lives, good things for this world. All of our provision comes from the inside out. Listen to that again. All of our provision, everything we need, is already within us because it's in the kingdom of God. And we believe it and we start to speak it and we start to act our faith out, then those things are going to manifest in our lives because the kingdom of God is in our spirit and the spirit realm is absolutely pregnant with everything that we need. God has already got ready for you and I everything that we need to do, everything he has called us to do. It's simply a matter of us believing it and receiving it, speaking about it, not being negative in our speaking, but speaking the word of God. Having a change of our thoughts in you is going to come out of you. And, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind 
that you may prove what is that good and it, I, I don't want you to be conformed this world system that word conformed it means this it means made to resemble or it means made agreeable to so he's saying I don't want you to be made to resemble this world and its system He's saying, I don't want you to be made agreeable to this world system. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't resemble this world. Let, let there be something that is so totally different about us that people see us, they recognize that difference, and then they want what we've got. I think that's a great, great thing that needs to happen in our lives is that people need to see you and I different. Not like this world. We are different. We should not be complaining about what's happening in life and, and, and about COVID and all that sort of stuff. We need to be a hope to this world. Because honestly, in the last almost two years, this world has got no hope. They really have lost all of their hope. They are just blindly following on whatever is told to them without many of them even questioning whether it's right or wrong. And so they need to see someone who's different. They need to somebody, see someone who's carrying hope, who's excited about life. And I believe that needs to be you and I. Because the Bible says that we need to be enjoying life, not when things are going really good, not when there's no issues and problems. No, no. Right in the midst of whatever might be happening, we need to be enjoying life to the full till it overflows. Because that's what Jesus said, I've come to give you. See, that's kingdom of God thinking. That I'm to be, to be enjoying life to the full till it overflows. That is kingdom thinking. Not what am I going to do tomorrow? You know, I, I just had someone text me and say that, that a, a husband and wife in the family were probably going to be out of work in the next couple of weeks. And, and I just encouraged them to say, well, come on, you, you've got to believe the word of God because God says that, that he will meet all of your need according to his riches in glory. He said that he will be our provision, our source of supply. He said, I will never see my children begging for bread. We need to be believing that. And we need to have that hope so that other people who might be losing their jobs can look at us and say, wow, I, I want that kind of hope that you've got. And that's a great way for us to witness to them about the goodness of Jesus Christ. This verse goes on and it says this. It says, so don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. This word transformed, it means this. It means to be changed in form or metamorphosed. I think that's how you pronounce that, metamorphosed. And, and, and if you think for a moment, all of you will have seen butterflies and how beautiful they are. But, but when they first start off, they're not like that. They're just an ugly grub. And then they become, they, they, they become metamorphosed. They, they change. There's a change happens to them. They turn from this grub into this magnificent, beautiful, colourful butterfly. There's a change that happens. And, and that's what Jesus, through the Apostle Paul to the, to the Romans, is saying to us. He's saying, don't be conformed, don't be resemble, or don't be made agreeable to this world. Don't do that, but be transformed, be changed in your form. Be changed in your thinking about life, about the goodness of God and who God is and what God can do for you in and through your life. He, he's remarkable. He will help us in a profound way if we actually believe him and just keep our faith out there for him. So let's go on tonight. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 23 and 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, well, look, he, he's literally saying, listen, I, I'm going to tell you some truth here. Pay attention to it. He said, I say to you that it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow, if we stop there and think about that, he's saying it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
And yet we believe with every fibre of our being that God wants to bless us financially, that God wants us to be rich and wealthy so that we're blessed to be a blessing to other people. And so here he is saying, well, it's going to be hard. But notice he said this. He did not say it's impossible. He didn't say it's impossible. It's absolutely possible for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But it's just very difficult for you if you're trusting in uncertain riches. We need to be not trusting in our wealth, but we need to be trusting in the God who supplied that wealth as our source of supply. So that if he says, I want you to give all the money you've got away, it's gone that quick because you know where you got that from. And, and that's what he's saying. It's very hard if you're trusting in uncertain riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It's not impossible at all. Then he said this, and again I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He's saying, listen, it, it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. A lot of people have said and, and tried to prove that there's this, this hole that is in the wall that was surrounding Jerusalem and, and that hole in there was just like the eye of a needle. It was just tall but very thin, not that tall. And they called it an eye of a needle. And so they say that, that, um, that when a, uh, the doors and the, the gates, I should say, not the doors, but the gates of the city are closed, then if a trader came late, then he would have to come to the eye of the needle. He would have to take all of the, the possessions of his camel, get his camel down on its knees and crawl through, and then he would pass everything through. And so he's saying that, that it's, it's easier for a camel to do that than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So can I say this to you? That's rubbish. What I just said to you is rubbish. There is no such thing in the wall ever that was called the eye of the needle. Never. This is simply an illustration that Jesus is using. He's saying this, that it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But notice now, remember, we're talking about rich people who are trusting in uncertain riches. We're not talking about just rich people. No, 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 not at all. People who've got money would be in trouble. People who are poor are going, whoa, this is great. I'm, I'm just going to slip in. Or maybe you won't slip in. Depends on whether you're trusting in God and you're doing the will of God in your life. And so this thing about easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, that, that's just an illustration that Jesus was using. It's not a real place. I, I know of people who have gone to Israel on tours and, and they've said to their tour guides, we want to see the eye of the needle. And the tour guides just have to tell them, well, I'm sorry, but there is no such place. None whatsoever. Jesus used it as an illustration only. So if you go to Israel, don't waste your time looking for the eye of the needle. And if you've read stuff that says about it, it's not true. There is no eye of the needle. Illustration only. But let's continue. Matthew 25, and we're going to read from verses 1 and 2. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were foolish, uh, five of them were wise, and five were foolish. So we're seeing the kingdom of heavens like this. There's a bunch of people who are going to be ready and are going to be wise about the days that we live in, and then there's going to be a bunch who are not ready for that. They're, they're just, they're, they have no concept of the days we live in. And I think we're like that today. I wonder if people really do realise that we are in the end of the days. I don't believe it's quite the end of the end, but I think we're not far off it. I think Jesus is coming back 
sooner than many, many people think. They kind of think, oh, we've got plenty of time to do this and do that and, and live life and do these things. But Jesus is coming back and it's very, very soon. And so here he's saying there were five wise virgins. They had oil in their lamp. They were anointed. They had light. They were living by the word. And yet then there were five who were foolish. They're like, oh, it's not going to happen just now. We, we don't have to be ready. We don't have to be prepared just yet. We're, we've got time. But then the bridegroom came and the five wise were able to go in and the five Five foolish ones weren't. They weren't ready. They weren't doing. Remember we said last week that, that it was not only we, we accept Christ into our life and that gives us the right to enter heaven, but then we've got to be doing the will of God, which allows us to enter in to heaven. So these five, uh, five uh, foolish, they weren't ready. They weren't doing the will of God. There was no, there was no concept in their lives of, of, of being, being absolutely ready to go on through into the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 26 all the way to 32. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It's like a mustard seed, for when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all of the seeds on earth. But when it's sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. So he's saying the kingdom of God is like this, is a man is sowing seed. And, and if we're in the kingdom and we're thinking about the kingdom and we're meditating and we're, we're changing our, our concept of life by the kingdom, seed. there's no doubt about it. You can't be a powerful kingdom person if you're not. You can sow a seed of love to someone. So there's many, many different kinds of seeds. And he says this, that every seed planted in the kingdom is going to grow. It's going to come. First the blade and then the ear and then the full corn in the head. And then you'll be able to reap that harvest. And so he says this, that the seed should grow. The seeds you have sown should grow. Not just financial, but every seed, every good thing you've done, God will repay you. Ephesians 6 and verse 8. Every good thing you've done, God will repay you. So every good thing you've been doing to people, being kind and forgiving and loving and generous and merciful, all these, you should be ready to receive them back from God. They're coming back to you. Absolutely. You need to have faith that God is doing that. And so it says the seed should grow. Seed is meant to grow. It carries the ability in it to grow. Some seeds take longer to grow than others, but it will grow. So what if something you're believing God for and sowing seed for takes, takes years to come to pass? So what? It'll still come to pass. I, I know of people, I know Dr. Jerry Savell, he had been believing God for an international aircraft. He did a lot of travel around the nations of the world and he was believing God for his own international aircraft. And he was sowing seed and believing God for it and sowing seed and believing God for it. And 20 years later, actually last year, in the middle of COVID, the plane arrived. What a time. What a time for that harvest to come up. So see, verse 30 here, it's, it's, it's a picture of the kingdom. Verse 30, then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? 
He's talking about a picture of the kingdom of God. He's saying that, that a mustard seed, and if I had a mustard seed here tonight, I've got a packet of mustard seeds in my office. But if I had a mustard seed here tonight, the, the camera would have to focus in really, really close to be able to see that mustard seed. It's so, so tiny, really small. And he's saying if you plant that mustard seed in the ground, that, that seed, it is, it is going to grow. It is made to grow. And so he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is like that. You can plant small things and you can reap great things back from it. See, when it's sown, it grows and becomes great and large. And it says that it shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may come and nest under its shade. See, I believe this. I believe that our lives need to grow so much in God and in the kingdom of God, that, that we become a place that people can come and find rest in our lives. That people can come and find a word of wisdom that will encourage them, that will give them hope, that will lift them from wherever they might happen to be. I, I know my wife just very recently, that happened to her. Said a few encouraging words to a lady in it, and she said it just lifted the lady. That that lady was coming and resting in, in the tree that my wife had built in her life. See, others can come and they can find rest in you operating in the kingdom. See, what we need to have an understanding of is that this is not about just you and me. What, what I do here on Tuesday, Thursday nights and, and on Sundays and other times is not about me. It's not about building my kingdom. It's not about me being able to, to rise up and be like someone great. It has nothing to do with that at all. My purpose is this. My purpose is to meet your need. My whole purpose for, for, for putting this together, preparing this, and, and, and praying over it, and then preaching it, is this, is to meet your need. Everything I do is about meeting your need. It's not about building myself up and, oh, well, aren't I great and aren't I wonderful? And No, no, not at all. It's about meeting the needs of the people. It's not about doing a good job to get money in. No, not interested in that. I'm interested in doing a good job to meet your need uh, because I want to be, become a tree that is large enough that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds can come and rest in my branches and find what they're needing in life, finding the keys to the kingdom that God has given to me. I hope that encourages you with that word. Let's go on. We're going into Mark chapter 9 and verse 1. Mark 9 and verse 1. And he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. So I, I want you to focus in on those last three words, present with power. We have to be believing God that this kingdom we're living in, this kingdom mindset we have, is one that carries power. I don't care who you are. I don't care what background you've had. I believe this, that if you are born again and you're in the kingdom of God, you may must be believing God for the power of the kingdom to flow through you. What is the power of the kingdom? It's having a word of wisdom when someone needs to be encouraged. It's having a prof prophetic word from God. Maybe it's, it's, it's using the gifts of healings for a person you come across. All of these gifts of the Spirit are yours and mine, that he says, these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Mark chapter 16, at, right at the end of the, the chapter. And so this kingdom carries power. This kingdom is, is present with power. The, the, the power of God is available to us if we will start to renew our thinking and start to believe what the kingdom has available for us. Listen to this verse of scripture from Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. 
For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Listen to it again. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. We need to be believing God. Whoever you are, you might feel like you're just the lowliest person in the kingdom of God. Well, the Bible says this, that you are even greater than John the Baptist. For Jesus said the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Now, you'd all agree with me that John the Baptist was some pretty awesome guy, quite amazing guy. And yet the Bible says that the least, the least in the kingdom is even greater than John the Baptist. That's got to encourage you tonight, friends. It really does. And so it's not just in word, but in power. And so we need to be believing God for the power of God to flow out of our lives. That you can... See, the Bible said this. If you... It says, These signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He didn't even say anything about praying. He said, Lay hands... On the sick, there's a transference from the kingdom of God in you that goes through you into that person. He didn't even mention in there about praying. He just lay your hands on that person. That's all. See, I, I see very much that our hands are, are very much like uh, like the the cables that go on a battery. If the, if the cables are not connected to the battery, you can wave them around, touch them, do anything you like. But once one end of the cables are connected to a battery, if you touch them, they spark. There's, there's power released. Well, you need to realise that you and I, we're living in the kingdom. The kingdom is in us. We are connected to the kingdom. And here are the cables. And so we take these cables called our hands and we lay these hands on the sick and the power of God, the charge of God flows out of us into that person, healing them and making them whole without even praying for them, just releasing the power of God that comes out of our lives. Let me finish very, very quickly with Luke Chapter 9, 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. I want to say to you tonight, I, I'm, going to, I'm sending you to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Everyone who is watching this or will watch it in the future, I am right now, I'm sending you to preach the gospel and to heal the sick. Stop making excuses. What will people think of me? Oh, what will they might reject me. They rejected Jesus. So what if they rejected you? I've been rejected stacks of times. Hasn't hurt me does the opposite actually it actually fires me up i might be a bit strange but but here he's saying this so so i'm saying to you today i'm sending you to preach the kingdom of god and to heal the sick yes right now you watching me i'm sending you to preach the gospel and to heal the sick receive it Say this with me. I receive it. I take it. That's mine. I, from this time forward, am going to preach the kingdom and heal the sick. That's your job. So that's all I've got time for, to talk to you about the kingdom of God. But I I hope you've been really encouraged about it, to realize it's on the inside of you, that Jesus said to do this, seek first the kingdom of God. I, I have... A bunch of things I pray each day and right at the top of it, I have put this. Seek first the kingdom of God so I don't forget before I do anything else. Hey, sent ones to preach the kingdom, to heal the sick. I just want to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you and value you so very, very much. And and here we are almost at the end of 2021 
getting ready to step into 2022, don't start to think, I hope next year is better than this year. Don't compare next year to this year. Next year, 2022 is the year of new and that God is anointing you for breakthrough. 2022, the year of new, that God is anointing you for breakthrough. Next year, 2022 is going to be your year of breakthrough like never before. Things that that you've been waiting for, it's time for your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Because the kingdom of God is in you and now you're aware of it, you're meditating on it, you're believing it. So Father, I pray for all of those who are watching this broadcast. Let your kingdom be absolutely real to them, more real than what this world has to offer. I bless them. I bless them in the name of Jesus that everything they put their hand to will increase and prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Have an amazing weekend and hope to see you Sunday morning and Sunday night again. God bless you. I want to tell you, Susan and I genuinely love you and pray for you often. So God bless you. Enjoy the love of God in your life. Remember these words that Jesus is Lord. Amen.